Hello guys, Dr. Alia here. Today we are going to continue into Chapter 7, Chromosome Organization and Molecular Structure. Um, before we learn about how chromosomes are organized in the cell, let's first uh, have a look at the different types of chromosomes or genome that are out there. So for viruses and bacteria, there are slight differences in their genome uh, compared to eukaryotes or us humans. And here in this picture, in this slide, I have a typical virus model, the bacteriophage. But I guess I should change to here, a coronavirus, the new normal, can. Okay. So before we start, I'd like to go through some definitions. So we've been talking about genes and genetics, and then I'm going into genome, and then there's even a field called genomics. So what's the difference? So let's look at a gene. Gene is a sequence of nucleotides in DNA or RNA that encodes the synthesis of a gene product, either RNA or protein. So look here, it's just one sequence of nucleotides. And genetics is a study of this genes, genetic variation and heredity in organisms. And then we have genome. So genome is actually the complete set of DNA. So all of its genes. So I have a karyotype here picture of a karyotype. This is a picture of a karyotype. So basically all the chromosomes are included. And genomic, so genomic is a study of the structure, function, evolution, mapping and editing of the genome. First, let's look at the viral genome. Virus, yeah? Bukan viral kat Facebook ka apa? Virus. So viral genome. Viral genome consists of DNA or RNA, never both. DNA and the RNA molecules can be double-stranded or single-stranded, linear or even circular. All viruses contain the following two components, a nucleic acid genome and a protein capsid that covers the genome. Um, so both of this is called a nucleocapsid. But then there are other enveloped viruses that also contain a lipid envelope. So I include this because, of course, like the coronavirus, is an enveloped virus with spikes as well. So the structure and composition of these components can vary widely. Uh, so viruses are not cellular organisms because they rely on host cells for replication. Most viruses have a limited host range or spectrum of cell types, uh, the type which it can infect. Here I have an example of a bacteriophage life cycle. So the typical model for viruses. Uh, bacteriophage are viruses that infect bacteria um, and they have uh, a life cycle called a lytic cycle where the bacteriophage uh, it attaches to the bacteria and then insert its DNA using the host, uh, host materials. It produces, uh, replicates the DNA and produces more viruses and eventually causes the cell to lysis and or basically burst and releases new viruses. So the coronavirus is a bit different in terms of uh, how it infects. So since um, they have these spike proteins here, um, corona, the typical influenza virus, they actually uh, have these spike proteins that actually bind to receptors on the cell surface. And then they bind to those receptors and get engulfed into the cell through endocytosis. Uh, after that, the new viral particles will be made here and they actually get released externally without actually bursting the cell. So this cell can actually continue making new viruses. Uh, 
so that's just a bit information concerning coronavirus. Next up, bacterial chromosome. Bacterial chromosome is found within a region of the cell, of the bacterial cell called the nucleoid. It can be a few copies, one to four copies of chromosomes per cell. They are circular. Bacterial chromosomes are circular, few million nucleotides in length, and there's a few different genes on the circular chromosome. First would be structural gene sequences. It, that would be the majority. And then also intergenic regions where it is non-transcribed, uh, non-transcribed genes and also repetitive sequences. The bacterial chromosome also has one origin of replication, just one. And this uh, serves as the initiation uh, sequence where it starts for proteins uh, for uh, proteins required in DNA replication. We'll look at that uh, later in the next um, uh, chapters. To fit within a bacterial cell, the chromosome must be compacted around thousandfold. Uh, so loop domains, uh, you have your circular chromosomal DNA, they form loop domains, which are folds in the DNA. And the number of the loops can actually vary according to the chromosome and species involved. And these are bind together by DNA binding proteins. And then uh, it is further compacted uh, by DNA supercoiling, which is basically twisting, further twisting of the DNA. So supercoiling can be negative or positive. It just means that negative is the creation of the tension or twisting and positive is the relaxation of the twisting so that you can get that uh, circular DNA back again. So this is actually important because you would want to separate the strand. Uh, if it's a double helix, you want to separate that for especially in replication uh, purposes. Um, so supercoiling is controlled by two enzymes. So we have DNA gyrase or topoisomerase 2, which makes a nick or break in the strand and twist them up. And we also have topoisomerase 1, which also break or nick, or nick the um, strand, releases the tension so that you would get that circular uh, DNA once more. So there you have the viral genome and bacterial genome. Up next, we'll look at our own genome, the eukaryotic genome, and how that's organized. That's all for today. Bye!